Hello world, Shelly here, and today I want to talk about cream complexion products, creams, balms, all the things, putties, why you might want to use them, how I use them, why they're great for dry skin, how you can get a five minute face out of them. I've got a bunch of my favorites here, and I'm going to just talk through the differences and show you how I like to wear them. So creams, balms, they're, they're your, your soft solid kinds of complexion products, different from powder products. And they can be great for dry skin because you don't have any kind of ingredients that absorb oil. Oftentimes it's the opposite. You'll have emollient types of ingredients that help to provide some hydration and oil to your skin. So if you have dry or dehydrated skin, they can be the best thing ever in those circumstances. They also tend to hold up really well in flaking conditions. So if you have some flaky skin, these might be the types of products you might want to go toward for those situations. Now they come in all different kinds of things. You've got putties, you've got cream palettes, you've got soft creamy products, you've got harder balm type products. I've got a bunch of them here. Let's just talk about how we would put a face together with some of these. So most of what I prefer to use these for is when I'm going for sheer to light coverage. So I'm wearing like a tinted moisturizer as my foundation and not a medium to full coverage foundation. That's not to say you can't use products with higher coverage foundations, but I personally tend to do these when I'm doing a quick out the door kind of a face or a very, very light coverage kind of a face. Now, some of the base products you may start with a putty primer. Now, I usually skip the primer when I am doing a light coverage look like this, but this is the Vitamin C Putty Primer from... Kitten just jumped right across my vanity, knocked a whole bunch of stuff over. Uh, Putty primer from e.l.f. I'm telling you, I tried to lock the cats out, but then I had forgotten that I needed a fresh box of Kleenex, and when I opened the door, the cats all came back in. So, I'm sorry or you're welcome, depending if you <laughs> like the interruptions of the cats in my videos. I'm gonna skip the primer today because typically I only go for primer when I'm doing a higher coverage foundation, but you could start with a putty primer if you wanted to do some additional smoothing or blurring of pores, that kind of a thing. Now, when it comes to the base, I prefer a sheer to light coverage for these kinds of looks. Here are some options. So, one is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. Now, this one kind of bummed me out when I first reviewed it, but as you can see, I've used a lot of it since then, and I basically just found that less is more with this product. Don't try to build it up for coverage. Use it for sheer, sheer light coverage, and you will be fine. When I built it up is when I end up getting issues with it. I prefer to apply most of these products with my fingertips. Now this one is a soft solid and it is very, very emollient. And it's not as emollient as the Jones Road, which I'm gonna show you. It's got a little more solidity to it, but they benefit typically from having the warmth, your body warmth. So applying with fingers can be a really good way to do these, unless you're using one of the harder packed ones. So. For example, the CoverGirl Olay Simply Ageless Balm, this one is a little bit more solid. Like, it's not as, you don't pick up really as much when you go in with this. And so products like these, I actually like, whoa, as I hit my mirror, I actually like to use a dry sponge to apply these and just go in and pick some up and then you can apply and get just a little bit of coverage and they tend to come up easier. Now then I, I do tend to blend them in with my fingers again because your warmth of your body heat is going to help to spread those out. So the harder pressed ones that are more of a solid than a cream, try a dry sponge if you've never tried that before. Another one that I really like in that sort of solid-ish category, I recently reviewed this one off Amazon. It's the Age 20s compact 
And again, I like this one best with a um, dry sponge to apply and it picks up nicely and you can get a little bit of coverage out of it. It seems like the solid ones, you do get a little bit more coverage. So that is another option. Today I'm going to use the Jones Road. This is the What The Foundation. Now this is a cream product. I've had an interesting road with this one. I've been an interesting road with Jones Road. When I first reviewed this, when I first received it, I reviewed it the day after it arrived to me and it was not separated at all. Then I had it for a little while and every time I opened it, the oil was completely separated from the product inside. Now, and then I would just stir it back up. Now it doesn't separate too much. So I have a feeling that whether it separates or not is based on the temperature, like the ambient temperature. And I haven't figured out, does cold make it set and warm makes it melt? Like, I don't know. But don't worry if it does separate. This one is super, super, super emollient. So if you have oily skin, you're probably not gonna enjoy this one. However, if you have dry skin, it is super, super luxuriously hydrating. Now, go light with this one. If you apply too much of this product, you're going to feel like you have to set it with powder and that kind of defeats the purpose for us dry skinned people. But I like to apply this with fingertips and I just go in, dab, get a little bit on my fingertips and spread it out. Now this one does have oils in it again. So oily skin is probably not going to enjoy it as much. I do take this up under my eyes. It is heavily fragranced as is the case with so many prestige brands. Now this is Bobbi Brown's new brand. Once her 25 year non-compete with her original brand that she made expired, she launched Jones Road in 2020. And I love her. I love Bobbi Brown. So I'm enjoying <laughs> her new line. Now the Bobbi Brown brand still exists. Who'd she sell it to? L'Oreal, Estee Lauder? I can't remember which one, which of the big guys she sold it to. But, and she was head of it for, you know, 30 years or something like that, even after she sold it. But, love this stuff. And I love Jones Road, so follow Jones Road if you like Bobby Brown. So, as you see, we don't have a whole lot of coverage going on. We just have a little bit of zhuzh. Like, we've just kind of given a little bit of evening out and you know a little bit of glow to the face not a ton of coverage don't try to build this up with coverage this one is not going to build very well you probably won't be happy with the results if you try to but if you use it as a sheer wash of hydration and a base it's wonderful so that is your base now let me move some of these out of my way now we get into the next layer Typically, this is going to be your bronzer, your blush, your highlight. Now, I have one intermediate option for you here. This is another Jones Road product. This is the Miracle Balm. Now, I bought the What the Foundation myself. I love that name. WTF. It just cracks me up. Like, another reason. I love Bobbi Brown. I think if I hung out with her, we would have a blast. And no, she has no idea who I am. But I did get the Miracle Balms sent to me in PR. Not, probably not from Bobbi herself but <laughs> from the brand, from whoever runs their social media. And which is good because when I reviewed the What The Foundation, so many of you asked me to try the Miracle Balm and I just hadn't picked it up yet. So I've got a couple of these. This one is something about Miami. Where is it? Nope, this is the other one. I need Sherlock. I cannot read. I can't read this thing. Flushed. Oh, well, that makes sense. So these Miracle Balms. They are a, a balm, somewhat more, they're, they're less of a cream, more of a balm, okay? And you can actually wear these all over your face instead of the What's the Foundation type of a product. So if you want to skip a tinted moisturizer or you want to skip a product like that, you can actually go straight in with something like this. Now, it looks like a blush color, right? But these sheer out quite a bit. And I'm gonna use my finger just to, cause I don't, I didn't get out my guitar picks. Guitar picks are great for getting these putties out, but I didn't get any out. So you actually wanna get a good chunk of this 
and you can sheer it out over a larger area of your face and it'll just give you a hint of color to your skin. Now they have a variety of shades of these and I find that they're not quite, I wouldn't wear them if I'm doing a full face where I'm trying to use it as blush because they don't have quite that much pigment to them but I actually really enjoy them as just a flush of color. You know what I'm saying? And it just gives a little bit of smoothing to texture. It gives a little bit of a glow to the skin. And as you saw, I used it over a very wide area of my face. Really, almost my entire face. I'm not being careful in terms of where it goes because I am just kind of zhuzhing up my complexion. I love them for that. So this is the flushed shade and the other one I have, I'll just show you the color, the one that has Miami in the name, Miami Beach. How did I forget that? That. So this one's a little bit more deep in tone, but I can still wear this in the same way I just applied that one. I'll give you the little, the little sheer out so like you can leave it slightly concentrated or you can blend it out. I like to blend these out because I feel like there's not enough pigment to like place it just as blush if I'm wearing makeup. If I want a flush of color and I'm not gonna do a rest of my face, I would go out with throw mascara on and get out the door. Like this works that way. And it's just a little bit of zhuzh, a little zhuzh to what you've got going on. So that is an interesting product. I don't think I know of anything else on the market that is quite exactly like that in the purpose and how you wear it and the end result, but I love it. I think it's lovely. I've been wearing them to work the last couple weeks and very much enjoying them. Now we get into blush bronzer highlight. I prefer to do mine darkest to lightest so that if I went too heavy on a darker one, I can kind of layer and scale back and blend in the lighter colors as I go. We have so many options when it comes to, let's say, bronzer. So you've got the putty texture, so like this is the e.l.f. putty bronzer, which is a pretty firm, solid kind of a texture to it. You've got similar, but not quite as firm. I don't know if they make it like more emollient when they put it in these palettes, but this is the e.l.f. I don't think you can get this one anymore, the Electric Mood, but this was a cream face palette that has blush bronzer and highlight in it, which clearly is well loved in my world. It is good for that. I've also got, uh, Color Street just came out with some cream complexion products and some powders, and this is slightly more emollient, not as, firm as the putty bronzer. You can just tell from the the sort of glossiness on the top, the level of oils and natural emollient properties that come based on the ingredients in these kinds of things. So I like to apply both of these kinds of products with my fingertips. You can use a brush. I recommend a somewhat dense brush like Oh, do I have one sitting here that would make sense? So like this is a contour brush, but this level of density would be what we're talking about. Something that it's still flexible for blending purposes, but it's got a lot of bristles to it. It's not like flowy, lots and lots and lots of space between the bristles. It's, it's more densely packed. So I prefer dense brushes when I use a product like this, but for best results, I like fingertips. So let's do the putty on one side. So this one's a little more firm. So you get your finger in there and as your body heat warms it up, you're going to pick up product. Bronzer, I start from like the, the join of my ear, if I get my sideburns out of the way, like right where my ear joins. And you wanna follow the ridge of your cheekbone, the underside of your cheekbone. I'm pressing up on my cheekbone right here. So that's kind of where you want to go. You're kind of aiming down toward your mouth, but if you're fighting gravity like I am at this age, I actually like to keep it there and then curve it up a little bit. I don't want to bring my face down. I want to give myself a little lift up. So 
I put the concentrate, the most of it, at that base. I don't want to flip you guys off here. At that base back there, and then drag it forward along the edge of your cheekbone, that bottom edge. And then blend upward. And just take it, what you got. There's my little excess. That gives me a little bit of a shadow. Now, I'm cheating the contour here. I'm bronze touring. I'm using my bronzer to give depth and shadow. You could use a contour shade, which is usually more gray toned, to emulate shadow. Then I'm going to take a little bit up toward my temples, blend it, keep the, keep the concentration of product toward your hairline, and blend out toward the center of your face. And then I'll take a little bit up into where I'm losing my hair, my hairline. And first I blend it along the hairline and then I take any excess and blend it downward on my forehead. Make that forehead look a little bit smaller than it is. I like to connect these. A lot of people don't. I connect them at my temple. That's just how I apply my bronzer. Now you could also take some along, same thing, jawline. I don't typically do this because I'm fat. And so while there are reasons you would mask your fatness, I, <laughs> mine, my double chin ends up betraying me and then it looks like I've got heavier makeup going on and it just looks obvious. So I usually don't do my jawline, but for purposes of this video, I will. And then blend that down so that you are minimizing, you know, darkness minimizes. So I'm trying to minimize all this extra neck fat here, right? I don't really care about that, so I'm not worried about it. But if you want to sculpt your neck fat, feel free if you got the neck fat. You could also contour your nose right along here. I'm not really going to go that far with it. Because like I said, this is usually my five minute out the door face. I'm not usually doing a ton of sculpting or anything like that. So make sure you have no harsh lines left over. We're gonna do this with a slightly more emollient product. Now this is a slightly harder product. This one's a little bit more emollient, the Color Street version. Same technique though. So this one has a little bit more softness to it. But again, I'm gonna concentrate it here and I'm gonna take it right along the edge. Like feel your cheekbone, press it along your cheekbone. The thing with creams that's really cool is you can press, like you can get in here, feel that bone, and you're just going to blend it out. It's not like powder where you're going to end up having way too much product in one spot because since it's emollient, it's going to move around. You can, you can blend it out. So that is how I do it. I press right in there and make sure I'm getting the right structure of my face. And blend it upward. Sometimes you might want more concentration back here just to make the contour shape a little bit more obvious. My sides of my face are not going to match, but that's okay because I'm doing different things. So put a little concentration back here. It will kind of make that jawbone, jawbone, cheekbone look a little bit more prominent. And instead of going downward, I take mine upward just a little bit. We're going to fill that in with blush, so it's not going to be a problem. I know it looks weird at the moment, but then I take it up here, connect my temples, blend it downward, and there we go. You're trying to kind of mimic what the sun would have done hitting your face from above, and so that piece of your forehead is usually going to be the part that's popping out there. That is that side. Let's move to blush. We got lots of options for blush. So one of my favorite palettes, this is the Natasha Denona Bloom Blush and Glow palette. And there are two shades of blush in here. And you can even combine them and use the darker shade as like your main blush. And then the lighter shade is like a gradient kind of a thing going on. This has been one of my favorites for quite some time. I'm not even sure if you can still get this one. The e.l.f. palette, another favorite. I showed you this one, but this is the coral blush and the dark pinker blush. And Color Street also has a blush, a balm out now. It's a shade Go Getter. I'm going to use this one on one side. Pretty emollient. Again, they've got a pretty soft emollient 
balm product. So for blush, I like to smile. I like the concentration to be on the inside of my face and bring it outward. And because I'm fighting gravity, I'm also gonna bring it upward this direction. So I start by tapping the coverage where I want it and then I'll go in and start blending out. That was Ziva. Try not to get it to your under eye, but I do sometimes take it to my nose because your nose is going to get some sun normally. Here's where I take it upward as opposed to outward. Now make sure you're hitting that connection spot where you had brought your bronzer up so that they connect. And you got yourself a little flush of color. I'm gonna take this onto the bridge of my nose, just whatever's left on my finger, because your nose gets sun. On the other side, another one of my favorites here, Salt New York. So these sell in pans, and these two are foundation down here. That is a bronzer shade, a little too light for me. That's a highlight shade, and then I've got two blush shades. I'm gonna use the darker one just to show you that on fair skin, you can totally get away with these because again, that pigment, when you place a lot of pigment with a powder, it can be harder to blend it out because it likes to stay put where you put it. Emollient products, like cream and balm-based products, move around, like you can move them around and blend them out and it's really much easier to use a variety of shades like this. So I'm just gonna tap in here, you know, pick up, tap, 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 tap and drag just a little bit. Now these are, again, harder pressed, kind of like the Elf Putty products. Smile, get your, get your placement down there, the heaviest of your pigment, and then go in. Now notice there's more tug to these. It's because they're a little bit firmer. There's a little bit less oil, a little bit less emollient. I'm gonna tap in here a little bit more. Come back this way. So you do have a little bit more rubbing, I guess that would be the word, to get them to blend out. But I still love them. Again, make sure you get that connection to the point where you had brought your bronzer and blend them out. I might as well take this one toward my nose as well, since I did that on the other side. And just give myself a little flush, a little flushy flush. And then you just kind of like, use your fingers to tap them into, until you like them. And there we got some flush of color. It's getting warm in here. <laughs> like I'm actually starting to flush just because I'm flushing. Oh, that could be, that could be the whole, did you guys see Drew Barrymore have her first hot flash, like, on the Drew Barrymore show, like, I think she was talking to Jennifer Aniston, and was it Adam Sandler there as well? I just watched that movie, I found it hilarious, it was good times, but, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that's what's happening, I don't know, I don't know, it's getting warm in here, I don't understand why. So, there's our blush. Highlight, and a cat hair itching my nose. Highlight, so... You've got glass skin kinds of balms, like this is from e.l.f., and it's that kind of a thing. It's actually not really imparting any shimmer, it's just imparting clear glass skin kind of a thing, which is nice for a no makeup makeup kind of a look. It just gives you some highlight based on light reflecting off your face, not reflecting off of glitter or any kind of a shimmer type of a product. So those can be a very nice type of a thing. You've also got stick options. So this, for example, is from Merit. This is their highlight stick. What the heck is it called? Sherlock to the rescue. I know the shade is called Bounce. It's the Day Glow Highlighting Balm. Let's try this one on this side. So I like to keep my face not smiling until the end. I'm gonna take this right on top of my cheekbone, the top part of your cheekbone as opposed to the bottom. And then I smile and I get a little bit on the little apple of my cheek there. Then I just take my fingertip and blend it out. This one is kind of a cross between glass skin and it's got just the tiniest bit of a champagne shimmer in this particular shade, but it's really, you don't see glitter going on anywhere. It's just a nice, so there's no highlight. There's highlight. 
no highlight highlight now since we have cream products on you do get a little bit of reflect anyway but love that we've also got highlight options in this is the one I want to grab this is the Natasha Denona my dream cheek trio and there is a cream highlight in here which you can either use on its own or top with their powder highlight I have no idea what the cats are doing. I'm so sorry if you can hear that. There are highlighter balms. This one's from Color Street. Similar type of product to their other cream products. So you have options when it comes to highlight. This would be the one in the e.l.f. palette up here. Which ones do I want to use? And we've got like the one that we've got in the Salt New York. There's only a powder highlight in this Natasha Denona palette. Let's do Salt New York's highlight. So it's this one right here. They are hard pressed. This is almost like a cream to powder feeling. Oh, I already did that side. Let's do this side. <laughs> they almost feel like cream to powder. And the ones that have shimmer in them like this, be careful that you don't get it on your under eye wrinkles. Because <laughs> if you do, they're gonna be more prominent. And that is a risk of highlights, is that they can make wrinkles look a little bit more obvious. But it just brings lift to your face and makes every, makes the high points look higher, where like bronzer is make, trying to make the low points look lower and give you some structure. I re just realized I did not put any bronzer on this side of my <laughs> under under my chin line here. So let's at least even out this face here and try to disguise some of that neck fat. Like I said, I don't normally take that step when it comes to my everyday out the door face. So what would I do to finish this face? I would get my MAC Paint Pot in Painterly and get my eyelids all evened out and then my favorite go-to eye look when I'm being like a quick out the door kind of a thing with cream products is to put some bronzer in the crease of my lid so I'm gonna use my balm desert and get some definition going right there and then I like to use cream eyeshadows and particularly the ones that you can get in, you know, the stick format. So I'm going to take some of this onto the lid of my eye as well, since I'm not going to be using multiple eyeshadow colors. And then I'm going to grab, assuming I can find it, a... I just wear this. This one is Brilliant Eyes. It's a drugstore one. Which brand is it? L'Oreal. So this is one of their cream shadows. And I just pop these on here. The Stilla Glitter and Glows are great for this. Any cream eyeshadow product is going to work for this purpose. They're quick out the door <laughs> no fuss no muss only thing is if you have hooded lids like i do keep your eyes you know don't open your eyes until it dries down like don't i'm keeping my eyebrows intentionally up right now and then i throw some mascara on this one is lawless and this is gonna be the look my eyelashes are not having their best, they're not living their best life right now. I don't know why. <laughs> Although it's been a while since I've had my eyelashes uncooperative, so maybe it's just that time of the year. I'm shedding, I just think I'm shedding like crazy. The Merit Mascara is actually great for these kind of no makeup makeup looks. This one's almost too intense. 
And then I will just do my brows. So this is the Lawless Brow Wax. And I pop some of that in there to give my brows, to even out the, the gaps in my brows. I have some little missing uncooperative pieces. So that just gives me a little bit of color in the brows. And then typically I'd be using my e.l.f. brow lift, but I left it in the car when I was traveling a couple weeks ago and it became a hot mess and it like melted and turned white. So I have to get a new one. So I'm back to my Anastasia brow freeze, but I swear even after going back to this for a couple weeks, the brow lift is a total absolute dupe. I did a side-by-side -side video, but you know, occasionally you'll test out a dupe, you'll think it's a great alternative, you'll use it for a while, but then when you go back to the original, you're like, oh, I remember why I love the original. But in this case, the elf is wonderful. <laughs> I see no reason to go with the more expensive options. So now that my eyeshadow has dried, I'm gonna go back in with my bronzer and just touch up the seam. Make sure that the color is, there's no harsh lines in there where the, the liquid dried down. And then you're ready to go with some lip gloss, something like that. What do I got in front of me here? This is the CoverGirl Yummy Clean Fresh what shade is this one? Let's get physical, physical. F-I-Z-Z-I-C-A-L. <laughs> I love these. I have quite a few of them now. Mm -hmm. They have a flavor to them. I don't know. It's kind of coconut-like. A little bit fruity. I don't know. It dissipates quickly. And then that would be... The look, that's it. And then I go about my day and have a day and everything's wonderful. So yeah, while this video did take a half hour to film, it's because I was showing you all different things and talking through it. You can really do this makeup look in five minutes or less. It's easy, it's quick. You don't need to set it with powder. It has lots and lots and lots of hydration. So especially if you're dealing with flaking skin or you're really dehydrated, it's it's a good type of a look to not exacerbate those issues. So there you have it. What are your favorite cream products? Creams, balms, let me know in the comments down below because it's kind of been my jam lately. This is kind of the road I've been taking lately because I'm enjoying it. You know I love my good solid medium coverage full face makeup days. Yes, I do, but I don't always have time for that. So when you don't have time, great alternative here. Let me know what your favorites are. Let me know if there's anything out there you would like me to try out and I will get my grubby paws on it whenever I can and grab them. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.